Well, 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 Zoom still has lots of low-hanging security vulnerabilities in their software, despite it probably being the world's number one video conferencing suite at this point, despite it being around for a few years and the company backing it, having a market cap of over $32 billion, they're still doing dumb things with their software. They're still doing unauthenticated automatic updates on Macs. Now, normally, when you install software on your Macs, a password is required. But some applications like Zoom, and I believe Chrome as well, like the spyware backdoored version that Google offers, not un-Google Chromium, uh, they also do unauthenticated automatic updates via an updater daemon. Now I can understand why companies like to have these daemons running on people's machines because oftentimes users are not very good about updating the programs on their systems or even the systems itself which could actually open up the user to security vulnerabilities, depending on the type of application. So maybe if you're a software company, you create these unauthenticated updater daemons that run automatically to try and keep your users safe. Also, you probably want your users to use whatever new features you've added or reskinning and just moving things around for no good reason. Uh, you probably want your users to do that. So you decide to force updates to your software upon them. But you've got to make sure that these daemons are running correctly with no vulnerabilities because otherwise they could be used for privilege escalation, at least if they're privileged daemons, which they typically are. And that is exactly what happened with Zoom's auto update utility. Now to Zoom's credit, there were some security checks and validations that were being done in the daemon. Uh, so only Zoom clients are able to connect to this privileged daemon and the update packages have to be signed by Zoom. But the way that the signature validation was implemented allowed for an attacker to place malicious packages with a name that just happened to match the certificate to be validated as okay. So you can see here from this slide uh, from Patrick's recent talk at DEF CON, and I'll leave a link to all of his slides in this video description. I don't know if a video of the talk has been posted anywhere, but I'm sure that that would probably be on like DEF CON's YouTube channel or something like that uh, soon. But anyway, right here you can see that this malicious package file, it's named Zoom Video Communications Inc. Developer ID Certification Authority Apple Root CA dot PKG. So this is what you would expect to see when you take a look at the certificate, but the name of the package matches the certificate. And because of that, it ends up appearing to be valid. And so the attacker can just package up a payload to create a reverse shell inside of this. And because that updater daemon is running as root, you end up getting a root shell on the victim's machine, totally pwning the system. You're able to do anything that that victim could do sitting right at the computer, but half a world away. Now, of course, doing this requires getting access to the victim's machine in the first place as an unprivileged user, okay? So this security flaw, it doesn't necessarily open you up to remote attacks. It doesn't let them get that initial shell on the system. But considering how many people use Zoom, what this is doing is it is creating a widely available privilege escalation technique, which normally is a lot tougher to do on Macs, uh, at least compared to Windows. So eventually, Zoom did patch this bug, but then yet another bug was discovered, which again, allows for privilege escalation to root on MacBooks. But it just makes it a little bit more complicated. So the way that the updated, the patched, quote unquote, uh, updater system works, they had the update function rename the package. So this is going to defeat that certificate package naming vulnerability. Uh, and then it moves it to a directory that's owned by root. But the permissions of that update package itself 
don't get changed. So an unprivileged user is still able to write to it between the time that the package is verified, that its signature is verified, and uh, when it's installed. So basically, during the time that it is unzipped. So you've got a much smaller window for when you can pull off this exploit, but the window is big enough, right? So you see um, in between this time here, all you have to do is change some lines of code, uh, apparently like 10 lines of code, and boom, you're able to replace the verified package with a malicious package. So yeah, it's a little bit more difficult to do, but if you're already managing to get unprivileged shells on somebody's Mac, then this is probably fairly trivial for you to do to escalate your privileges. And this is a problem that I don't even think Zoom has really been able to actually fix yet because the security researcher that made these slides has been going back and forth with Zoom for several months trying to get all these issues resolved and they just keep end up doing these half-ass non-fixes. Um, even now, so when he presented this on Friday, he said that these bugs still existed in the wild. And if we take a look at Zoom's releases, so they have uh, this one, which is from the future. Okay, that's interesting. What is this supposed to be about? Oh, okay, this is just saying that they're going to start forcing TLS certificates on uh, their meetings. So that has nothing to do with this particular issue. There's minor bug fixes, but no details on those from this future update. If we take a look at the one for today, this is release notes for web. So again, not addressing the Mac bug. And if we take a look at yesterday's notes, oh, we have release notes for the Zoom client. And, um, but yeah, we want the full notes for Mac OS. So let's take a look. And let's see, resolved issues, security enhancement. Oh, okay, so yeah, we just have this really vague description. And uh, well, let's see, we get more notes for the one in July, but we already know that this version is not actually patched. It just makes the uh, vulnerability that gives you root a little bit more complicated because you have to do it during that unzip window. Um, so yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't even think this is really resolved unless you're okay with this very vague security enhancement fix. I mean, I don't understand why people are okay with these vague descriptions coming from their software vendors. I mean, imagine if physical security vendors work this way. Like, um, I don't know. I mean, I can't even really think of any home security vendors off the top of my head besides Armalite and Remington. Uh, I guess ADT, right? They make like alarms or something like that. So imagine if... <laughs> ADT comes out to your house and they're like, yeah, we did some security enhancements. <laughs> and then you start probing them for more details and you find out that they did some home alone bullshit in your basement. They're like, yeah, we hung paint cans <laughs> from the ceiling and we put Christmas ornaments all over the floor and we rigged up a flamethrower to your, to your side door so that when Joe Pesci comes in, his hair is going to get set on fire. And don't worry about the top floor either. We got a life-size cutout of Macaulay Culkin standing <laughs> right in your kitchen. So if people peer through the window, they're going to get freaked out by that. I mean, would you be okay with vague security enhancements for physical security? No. So why are people okay with it for software? But you know, yeah, th that's what you get with Zoom, right? They're absolutely proprietary from the beginning. Had they been open source, maybe somebody could have just added a patch for them because... <laughs> They're so bad at trying to patch Max. Like, it almost seems like they don't even really understand how file permissions and folder permissions work because they're like, oh, we'll just move it to a root folder. That way the file can't be changed. But oh, the file itself has permissions. Anyway, this is what happens when people choose convenience for <laughs> their uh, their meeting app, which uh, let's be honest, most of the meetings that you're having would have been better off just being email. So it's probably not even super critical necessary software from the get go. But yeah, that's what happens when you install this kind of proprietary nonsense on your system. You end up getting rooted by some random hacker out there on the internet.